Dr. Jaffe, depression and anxiety is being seen more and more in young in the younger population. I'm curious to know, is mood guard an option for this group and what would the serving size be? Yes, mood guard, which is three simple amino acids, is available to adolescents, it's available to children. Um, and yes, we certainly see more what I would call mood disorders. We see more diagnoses. Um, very often when today a young person is diagnosed with hyperactivity or is diagnosed with a mood anxiety depression disorder, one of the issues is too much screen time, too much time with phones and tablets and computers, not enough time running around outside. So we do urge young people to be physically active and go out and play. Secondly, and to me as or more important, many adolescents, as part of growing up, they either live in the past, they rethink things that happened, often traumas that happened to them when they were younger, and if you live in the past, you end up depressed. And some of them are worried about the future. They're doing okay in the moment, <clears throat> but they're not sure what next year is gonna bring. They're not sure who their friends are gonna be because they're evolving, which means changing relationships and relationships with your own family. And if you live too much in the future, you get anxious. Now this was um, a concept well validated by Buddhist physicians over many millennia or at least many centuries. So we recommend young people being physically active. We recommend young people um, staying in the moment, which is you occupy them with activities that bring them into the moment. For example, sitting quietly and breathing deeply into your abdomen, but slowly. Or taking a salt and soda bath while you're under a dichromatic green light. Or any of the other physiologic ways of bringing a message of harmony and of hope to the pineal, which is deep in the brain, it's right near the third ventricle. It tells through the thalamic tracts, it tells the pituitary what to do with regard to stress hormones and others, at least the releasing factors that come out of the pituitary, that then go to the thyroid, go to the adrenals, go to the ovaries or testes, go to the pancreas, go to the liver, communicate with the whole body. And it's only in the last few years that we learned that the vagus nerve is really bi-directional. It really is the highway that takes information from the central nervous system to the gut nervous system and from the gut nervous system to the central nervous system. Whereas just a few years ago, when I was a young uh, physician uh, student, we were told <coughs> that the vagus nerve only comes out of the brain and goes to the body, throughout the body. It includes the nerve that helps your diaphragm. And by the way, many young people with mood disorders are breathing too shallowly in their respiration. They're not breathing deeply. And as a consequence, they're not really moving their diaphragm. They're not really moving their intestines. And yes, young adolescents very often have either a sweet tooth or they um, a preference for highly processed fast food. And while I understand it's fast and I understand it has calories, when my children were growing up, <clears throat> we showed them that their body felt and functioned better when they ate whole foods, especially the foods they could digest, assimilate, and eliminate without immune burden. And so in many of these young people, along with the Perk Mood Guard, you'd want to consider doing the LRA by ELISA Act test and following the full plan so that adolescence can be an opportunity rather than a time of contention. And I know that growing up is not easy and there will be times when teenagers behave like teenagers and we love them, but we also hopefully show them adult behavior, which means you can commune and communicate without withdrawing and getting yourself distressed. So anxiety and depression are different sides of a similar process where people are living in the past or the future rather than in the moment. And usually it means 
their nourishment, what they're eating and drinking, as well as what they're thinking and doing, is contributing to that dysfunctional process. And we want to help, especially teenagers, grow into themselves with help and hope, practice and effort. There are many young people who are extremely smart, and some of them very critical of their elders. And many of their criticisms deserve to be respected. But they don't yet have the life experience to understand why the issues really continue. They challenge us, that's a good thing. But very often they get themselves into trouble, emotional or other kinds of trouble, because they have surges of hormones, they have surges of neurochemicals, they have surges of immune responses, which are three aspects of the control system of the body. But they're not yet adult enough to make use of those opportunities. So in a sense, we want young people to tame without quenching their initiatives, but we want to do that <clears throat> in ways that respect nature and that help them grow into fully functional adults, rather than young people dependent upon prescriptive solutions, symptom reactive solutions, which is what the conventional community generally provides. And we believe the next generation is the functional, the predictive, uh, the individualized approach to optimizing body chemistry, hydration, uh, mental and physical uh, activities appropriate for that individual and their age. And then produce adults that are uh, thriving members of their community, uh, empathetic with themselves and their family, and able to do meaningful work for life.